Okay, I'm going to take you through the physics questions you have been given um, for the BMAP practice and give you some tips on some of them. Some of these questions are pretty hard, so I'll give you some tips. Some of them are easy, I won't give you any tips. And then later on next week, I think you'll be given the answers and then you can come and ask me if there's anything you want me specifically to go through. Okay, so let's just go through them one by one. Uh, now, the first question is one of the hardest. I think the circuits questions they ask, some of them are really challenging for you because you haven't been asked questions like this before because they're very different from GCSE questions. They require a bit of reasoning. Um, so I've put this one on another page over here uh, so I can draw on it more easily. So we've got four identical resistors connected as shown, okay, uh, all the same value. Um, and no current is flowing through the ammeter. Now, <coughs> What's going on in this situation, if you can't remember, is that, let's just say, for the sake of argument, we've got a 6 volt power supply or battery or whatever, okay? Um, you need to know what happens to voltage in, uh, in a circuit. Now, here's one way of thinking about it that I think works quite well, okay? The rule I have uh, is that if you take your finger around any closed loop, in a circuit, okay, any voltage you gain, you then have to lose on that closed loop. So if I start my finger here, okay, and I trace it around a closed loop in the circuit, if I go through the cells, I've gained 6 volts, okay. If I go this way, back to that point, that's a closed loop, okay, I gain 6 volts going through the cells, that means I've got to lose 6 volts going through whatever components I've been through, okay, now I've been through two resistors R and S, so I had to lose 2 volts going through those. Now, if they are identical resistors, okay, then they're going to lose the same voltage across each, so that would be 3 volts and that would be 3 volts, so the potential difference across each of those would be 3 volts, okay. There we go. Right, let me get rid of this path now, because now I'm going to take my finger on a different path. Oops, rubbed out some of my stuff there. Now, if I were to take my finger on another closed path around the circuit, okay, closed loop, starting there, gain 6 volts, go around the top, okay, I must lose 6 volts also around the top. Therefore, if they're identical, I'm going to lose 3 volts and 3 volts. So, um, what you'll notice is that the potential difference between this point and this point is zero. There's no potential difference because we've gained six and then lost three no matter how we get to that point. Okay, Whichever of those two routes I took, we had gained six volts and then lost three volts. So there's no difference in potential between two th these two points. So no current is going to flow uh, between them. Okay. Now, it's saying, what are we going to do to make current flow between those points? Well, the next thing you need to know is how is this voltage divided up if the resistances aren't the same, if they're not identical. Okay. Now, let's call this one 1,000 ohms, R, and let's call S 900 ohms. Okay. The same argument I just gave before applies. If I start here gain 6 volts, lose 6 volts as I go around a complete path in the circuit, but they're not identical, so the voltage isn't going to be split identically. Okay. Now, for the sake of this, I'll just tell you how it works. Okay. Um, you can work it out, it's not hard, just have to use V equals IR. Okay. But if you've got two resistors in series like this, the one with a greater resistance uh, there'll be more voltage across that component. So instead of it being 3 and 3, it might be like 3.1 volts and 2.9 volts or whatever. Okay, doesn't matter. It won't be exactly that. <coughs> you could work it out. But the point is for your BMAT, I don't think you want to be putting in numbers like this and kind of working it out and stuff. Okay, you kind of need to be going with a bit of intuition to get through them quickly. So what we're saying is now there's a greater voltage across the higher resistance, a lower voltage across the lower resistance. Well, this, this, this logic then applies to the top branch as well. Okay? So if we make this one 1,000 and this one 900, we're going to get the same situation on the top branch. So this one's going to be 3.1, this one's going to be 2.9 volts. If we do that, 
there's still no difference between this point and this point because whichever route I went with my finger I've gained 6 volts and then lost 3.1 volts whether I go the top route or the bottom route to that point so they're both at the same potential so there's no potential difference so no current so that's not going to work hopefully you've spotted that what we've got to do is do it on the diagonal okay so make that 900 and that 1000 now the potential difference across this one's going to be 2.9 volts now this one's going to be 3.1 volts okay now there is a difference between this point here and this point here okay there's a potential difference a difference in in voltage because if we go the top way to there we gain 6 volts then lose 2.9 if we go the bottom way we gain 6 and lose 3.1 that's different so there's a potential difference so current will flow so in order to to make current flow we need a potential difference between those two points highlighted in red so we need to we need we need to do uh, do them on the diagonal like I've done them here either this way or the other way around so you look at those options on the bottom there and work out um, which ones are the right ones good now that's the technique we're going to use again and again tracing our finger around and thinking about voltage uh, good right moving on so we've been going for a while already. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Fission uh, of uranium gives a strontium isotope and a xenon isotope. You've just got to be able to do these, okay? So you've just got to be able to work out, you've just got to balance, basically, the atomic number and the mass number. And they, I've looked through this paper. There's quite a lot of questions like this that are either about fission or they're about a series of, of radioactive decays, a series of alpha decays or alphas and betas. You've just got to know the rules for alpha decay, the rules for beta decay, and be able to balance um, atomic number a mass number and if you can do that you can answer these questions so that's that one done uh, next one how could the unit of potential difference the volt also be written now this is another classic type of question that comes up all the time okay what you have to be able to do is remember key formulae and if you google it online or maybe B might even produce it I don't know but someone's got a list of basically all the formulae you need to know okay so what you need to know is some formulae that involve voltage and then to be able to derive units from that okay so uh, I know some formulae for voltage let me just go on to another page okay I know some formulae for voltage V equals I R I know that one okay I also know V equals E over Q okay I probably know some more but we'll just start with these what does this allow you to do if you know formulae you can work out equivalent units okay so if in blue I've got my quantities voltage current and resistance okay in red I'll now do my units the units for, for voltage are volts the units for currents for current is uh, amps and then the units for resistance are ohms okay so volts are also amp ohms apparently don't see that very often but I can't see why you couldn't use it now down here volts are also equal to joules divided by coulombs joules per coulomb okay now are any of these on our list are amp ohms or a joules per coulomb on our list of options uh, yeah joules per coulombs are on our list of options okay so this is really common for them to ask you an equivalent unit uh, for, for a common unit and one way to do it is just by thinking of all the different formulae you know for that thing which formula could give you tho that combination of units okay good now <coughs> a heater is used on a 250 volt main circuit blah 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 I pr think that's pretty straightforward you should be able to just crack on and get that done um, here we've got a moment situation okay um, now you've just got to be think carefully here um, because typically what they'll do is not draw all the forces and this is a situation where they haven't drawn all the forces so if you go and do your calculation uh, based on just what they've drawn in the diagram and you work out X you're gonna get it wrong uh, because they've ignored one of the forces they haven't included the weight of the beam now it tells you that the beam weighs 10 newtons and it tells you that it's uniform if an object's uniform then you can consider its weight to act from its center of mass which is in the middle if it's uniform so what they're missing is a is a downwards arrow let me just switch to this they're missing from their diagram 
the weight of the ruler which you can, whoops, it's not very vertical, sorry about that they're missing the weight of the ruler which is 10 newtons okay if you now solve the problem based on that complete diagram you'll get it right hopefully so moments questions be very careful have they included everything on the diagram they may not have done keep moving which of the following is a correct unit <coughs> for potential difference voltage well they like this one okay so once again uh, have a look okay and see uh, if you can solve this one okay bear in mind there's more formulae with voltage in than just those ones that I listed okay so in addition to these ones in blue I also know for example P equals IV that's another one with voltage in so voltage equals power over current loads of options okay I'm not going to do it for you uh, that's the whole point you've got to be able to work these out so you've got to, you know be able to think about what are all the different formulae I can imagine for voltage and what units would that give me. Good. Moving on. Blah blah blah. Parachute. Uh, yep. You should be able to sort that one out yourselves. Any problems let me know. Half-Life. They do quite a lot on Half-Life. Okay. Um, this one's not tricky but some of the ones on Half-Life are tricky okay so have a go on, on that one and see how you get on uh, this one here there's a fair few elements that all feed into this this answer so you've got to be able to think what is the what what's going on with the detector reading and then what's going on with this decay curve okay um, try and work it out the one thing I'll tell you the clue I'll give you and they're really you know testing to see how how observant you are here and you don't have to be too observant to spot it is that this isn't a corrected count rate on the y-axis it's just the count rate so they haven't subtracted background away okay it should be pretty obvious so when you're doing your half-life okay uh, you've got to think you know I've got to correct for background when I'm doing that half-life otherwise you're going to get the wrong half-life so uh, just be aware that they they haven't corrected for background which you should be able to work out um, so hopefully you can work out what's going on because you know how far alpha beta and gamma can penetrate in air right what have we got here okay this you should be able to do because you are hopefully uh, biologists of some sort or you have done some biology at some point uh, and this is also pretty basic physics from that you just be able to read out of the textbook so that should be fine um, ultrasound reflected back speed of sound uh, blah 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 so this is I mean this should be pretty fine but you've got to remember with this okay that when you've got ultrasound the pulse of sound has to go there and back so if the feature is is or and the feature that we're looking at here is a fetus so if the fetus is 10 centimeters below the transmitter okay the sound has got to go 10 centimeters there and 10 centimeters back okay there we go I think that 500 meters per second for the speed of sound in the mother's body I mean I could be wrong but that seems a bit slow I think it's actually quite a lot quicker than that but anyway there we have it uh, I think it's more like 1500 meters per second right nucleus blah 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 got to be able to solve those okay um, they're not going to make it easy for you like GCSE where it's just an alpha or just a beta they'll make it a combination but it's not that hard you just need to know what does alpha decay do to the mass number and the atomic number what does beta decay do to it and then just combine them together right blah 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 maximum possible age of the rock okay so this is a reasoning problem as well as a half-life problem okay so you've got to think a sample of rock contains uranium and lead in the proportion one part uranium to seven parts lead and uranium decays into lead what's the maximum maximum possible age of the rock okay well you don't know how much there was to start off with okay when the rock was formed so that's your problem okay but if you want the maximum age then basically pretend that it was all uranium um, yeah sorry all uranium okay so just pretend that at the start it was eight parts uranium and zero parts lead and now after a certain amount of time has gone by <coughs> it's one part uranium to seven parts lead okay so what's happened to the amount of uranium how many half-lives has it been through so it's a bit of a reasoning question as well as a half-life question there okay uh, 
blah 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 more reasoning okay this you should have seen as well often we do this demonstration so you should even know the answer uh, to this one um, anyway because you've probably seen the, the, the decay of protactinium 234 but if you haven't okay then basically the protactinium it says here is decaying into uranium now what they're doing is telling us the amount of uranium okay they're not telling us the mass of protactinium okay so if you can work out I mean it looks like basically there's 16 grams of it at the end and that's pretty constant um, so if you can if you can deduce from this how much uh, protactinium there was at the start roughly speaking okay and then how the amount of protactinium remaining changed over time then you can work out the half-life of protactinium so have a think about that see what you come up with <sighs> blah 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 decay chains blah 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 okay standard you've just got to be able to do your maths do your adding up for your sequence of, of decays pretty standard oh look we've got another um, we've got another one with loads of crazy stuff going on with the circuit okay switch P is closed and then switch Q is opened blah 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 brightness before and after okay so I'm not going to work through it with you but <coughs> just um, remember the kind of the, the trick I showed you before about voltage okay if you know the voltage across a component then uh, you, you know it, uh, across a bulb sorry then you know how bright it's going to be okay if you know the voltage across a bulb you know how bright it's going to be if you know the current through a bulb you also know how bright it's going to be so if you can compare voltages or you can compare currents then you're all right uh, basically so let's just have well maybe I'll pause this video here actually and then um, do another one because it's getting a bit long so um, I'll go through this question on the next video